Hi, this is Dr. Collins Jones, and we're going to talk about making a vaccine to the Zika virus. As you know, the Zika virus is transmitted by mosquitoes, and it is rapidly growing throughout the Western Hemisphere. So it's really important that we find a way to protect all of us from this virus. There are many approaches to making vaccines, and on this slide, we're just going to cover a few of those. Uh, one is to make a protein subunit vaccine. And in this case, what we're going to do is use a protein that appears on the surface of the Zika virus, or a part of that protein that is a subunit, and use that to create our vaccine. And another, another way to do this is to use the DNA vaccine. And here, instead of isolating the protein and making the protein, we're going to take a gene from the Zika virus that codes for a protein that appears on the surface of the virus, and we're going to put that gene into the people, and the person's own cells is going to make the Zika protein, and that will again activate an immune response. Then we have our recombinant viral vector vaccine. This is using an adenovirus. Adenoviruses are not pathogenic, that is, they don't cause the disease. So what we're going to do is replace some of the adenovirus DNA with DNA from the Zika virus, and then that virus, when we infect people with the virus, while it won't make them sick, it will produce Zika proteins, and those Zika proteins will be recognized by the patient's immune system, and again, we'll get an immune response, and there'll be some protection. Then finally, we have the tried and true method of making vaccines, and that is to use a killed or an inactivated virus. Normally, we inactivate viruses using something like formaldehyde. The virus is now dead. We formulate this dead virus and inject it into the patient, but all the virus proteins are still there, so the patient's immune system can recognize the virus and respond to it. And the fact that there are multiple proteins because we're injecting the whole dead virus into the patient should trigger a little bit stronger, more robust immune response. And so the whole idea here is, again, with the vaccine, is that we're creating an immune memory. So when the patient is exposed to the live virus, they're protected against it because their immune system already has memory cells in place. If you'd like to learn more about your immune system and how vaccines work, sign up for a Biotech Primer BioBasics course. Thanks.